Yeah, what's going on everybody? It's your boy iPod King Card here. I want to welcome you guys to a new video. Check it out, man. Today I want to talk to you guys about the NBA 2K21 meta. Now, um, the funny thing is somebody left me a comment on Twitter asking me, what does R1L1 mean? And I just was looking around like, I mean, I don't know what R1L1 mean. So to anybody out there that doesn't know what it means, we will go over that today. But I basically wanted to break down the 2K21 meta as far as builds, jump shots, dribbles, everything that's going on in the community within the first week of the game being out. Now, if you guys don't know, the game did drop on September 4th. I'm making this video on the 11th. Hopefully it does come out today, um, but check it out. Um, the first thing that we're gonna be hopping into is the builds, but before we do that, there was someone else that dropped a comment in my comment section asking me how do they get more incentives for their endorsements now this is a my career question i know you're here and you're not really a my career player but just bear with me man it's only going to take a second Yo, Mesa, listen, I know that you wanted me to make an entire endorsement video, but I just wanted to put a small clip in there just to show you how the endorsement process really go for me myself. Um, so basically, you know, Archie say, sub baby boy, I come bearing good news. This is something about um, Tassat and making a new deal, right? So let's go ahead and just go in and uh, get right. So you know what I'm saying they come straight with the offer. Now you said that you want to get the most incentives possible. Now, if you want to get the most incentives possible, you want to counter offer and you just got to take all your money down. Now, the reason why you take all this money down to the lowest is because this is for an appearance. This is just simply for like a one time billboard pop up or something like that. And then you take the discount all the way down and then you can try and go for more incentives. Now, of course, at my current level of like fans and stuff like that, I would never ask them for five incentives. But since they already offered me two and I minimize the money and the brand, I would probably ask for four incentives. Let's see if they give them to me. So if you look at it like this, he's already telling you that he doesn't have permission to go that high, which means the incentives are really the bulk of the deal. So let's see what he comes back with, bro. Now he's telling you that he can give you three incentives, 16% store discount and more money. You can counter offer and go back down take away the discount and try to go up for the incentive again, right? He say, why don't you meet me halfway? How does this sound? All right, three incentives, 21 discount. See, they're, they're trying to give you, they're trying to give you more money when you don't necessarily want more money and they're trying to give you store discount. I don't care about store discount. All right, so let's counter offer again. We can make this work. So I just got four incentives for this Tassat deal because they were literally beating around the bush. I know that you wanted me to make a whole entire video, but no need. Also, just to let you know, bro, I haven't even cracked 250,000 fans yet. So you said that you wanted more incentives, so I got you more incentives. If you guys have anything that you guys want me to look over inside of my career, just let me know inside the comment section. I'll screenshot your question, and then I'll put it inside the next video. Let's get back into it. Let's go over the meta builds. Now, of course, on screen, you see that I run with the two-way slash and playmaker. I have not created any of the meta builds yet because I'm having fun with my two-way slash and playmaker. Now, of course, once I get to 99 overall, my build will be a little insane, especially if I'm running with somebody with floor general. But right now, the meta is, there's two builds that are roaming around. And these builds, everybody are, is either using or abusing and I want to tell you guys about these builds because of course there are going to be people out there that say I can't hit my jump shot I can't dribble what's going on somebody help me so this video is for you guys so the first build that we're going to go over is the playmaking shot creator now I'm a little bit upset at 2k because they didn't give this build a different name of course you guys see we're going backwards which means we're going to go through every single screen and I'll tell you guys why this is what people are using. So for this specific build, a lot of people wanted to choose the lock takeover, but the lock takeover is new because the playmaking shot creators in a sense never could get that takeover. But the, the new takeover that's taking over the airwaves is the sharp takeover. If you create a build that can get the sharp takeover and you have at least a 75 three, 
choose this as your takeover you will make just about everything okay um let's go ahead and back up the reason why we have 83.2 wingspan remember that wingspan is because it will allow you to get that lock takeover if you want to choose it now you can choose whatever wingspan you want you can go minimum if you want you can go maximum i wouldn't go maximum because you wouldn't have that max ball handling until you start fluctuating at 95. So that's why people go down two from the max because you'll be able to speed boost, get your pro dribbles, all of that out the gate, okay? Um, let's back out. I made this build minimum weight. You can, you can go up a little bit, but honestly, once you start going up, your speed and acceleration go down. So that's why I kept him minimum weight. But 6'4 is the best because if you go 6'5, you automatically lose your speed boost and off the rip. And that's what everybody wants. Everybody wants to have them pro dribbles, man. It's crazy because 2K was like, yo, this is what it's going to take to have pro dribbles. And everybody was like, wait, this is what it's going to take to have pro dribbles? Oh my God. So now everybody is adjusting their builds for the new meta, okay? Now, I choose the built body type. The reason why I choose the built body type is because when you choose built and you choose your weight, you can go minimum weight and not look like your player is slanky, sickly. You know what I mean? Like that that weird look. Like let me let me show you what everybody else goes with. Everybody goes compact. They go six four, and then they minimize their weight, and then wonder why their player look like a stick. You know what I mean? So I don't I don't go that way. You know what I'm saying? Because look, look how skinny that that boy needs something to eat. He needs some milk. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but let's go ahead and back out to the badges and the attributes. This is the thing that a lot of people want to take screenshots of. So go ahead, take screenshots all you want. The build finish is you have a driving layup, which is great because if you need to get around the screen, if you're playing twos, you can actually lay the ball up. Um, 22 shooting badges, more than enough. 24 playmaking badges. The reason why we go 24 playmaking is because with this build, with the meta, you want to run floor general. Okay, if you're not running floor general, that means that you're a selfish prick and you shouldn't be out here playing twos or threes with any of your teammates because you got all the bulk of the badges, you know? Um, also, let's go ahead and back out. 10 defensive, amazing, just by the way. 10 defensive badges are amazing. Um, let's go ahead and back out. And you always want to pick this physical profile. You always want to be the fastest player on the court as best you can. With my two-way slash and playmaker, I have 95 and 94. That's why I made that build because I am a speed demon. But a lot of people like this build. It's not that slow. Um, this is the skill breakdown. I did not choose this pie. No, not at all. I chose the regular standard playmaking and shooting pie because you want Hall of Fame shooting and playmaking badges. Remember that. Always want Hall of Fame in the category that you really want the most. All right. And of course, this is a point guard build, okay? Now, for the next meta build, I'm gonna show you guys that breakdown as well. I want everybody inside the comment section that already has this build, type one inside the comment section right now so I can know that you have that build or say, yo, that PG is my build, you know what I'm saying? Now, uh, let's talk about the second build. Now, a lot of people wanted to figure out what build they wanted to create as far as uh, if they wanted to create a paint piece or interior for like everybody wants a huge big in the paint to do work but in the first week it has shown that the meta is you want to have a bill at least six seven or six eight that can rebound and defend and shoot the reason why you want your build to be able to shoot because you need to space the floor there is no spacing nowadays nobody is getting spacing and that's why we're talking about the perimeter lockdown right now now before we hop into this build i know what you guys are thinking you're trying to figure out your ipod why would you create a point guard build that doesn't make sense we want a big we want a power forward we want a center no you don't the new meta is players need to be fast players need to be able to shoot and players just need to be able to defend I'm telling you right now, this build can snag for rebounds and it can defend on bigs, mainly because it's a locked build, mainly because it has high stats. And of course, the badges that you guys are about to see are the reason why you might want to create this build. I'm telling you, all this is the new meta. Now, let's go ahead and edit this build. Like I said, we're going to be starting from the back end. Now, remember, if you have a build that can get the sharp takeover, you want the sharp takeover. Now, if you're playing twos, of course, you, not, you may not shoot that many shots. The screens will hit different. And of course, when you can, you corner sit or you sit short uh, mid-range in the corner, you're gonna hit your shots with this build. So I say choose the sharp takeover. Now, if you'd wanna be a demon, I have no problem with that. If you wanna be the, 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 the old school perimeter lock from like 2K19, 
enjoy you don't need base 24 for this build but you will be able to shoot that's why the perimeter lockdown is totally different this year um and i'm not even sure if i've really seen too many people create this build but if you have leave it in the comment section now the reason why i chose 88 wingspan is because i still want this build to be able to shoot now of course you can go max but max really won't help you it'll just hinder you okay now some people they will keep it base. They will go 85 is the wingspan. They don't want max wingspan. They want to be able to shoot off the rip 75. This is why the first meta build is a build that has floor general. Because if you go to 88, your build now has a 77.3. As soon as you're playing with that other guy with floor general, this build will have a 77.3. You know what I'm saying you gotta you gotta remember like this is what the meta is you need your teammates to be able to work with you and this is what you'll have now the stats on these look crazy right let's back out 180 is the weight the reason why i have 180 as the weight is because it's about speed and acceleration if you're bigger than other bigs you'll blow right bomb and i'm gonna show you what we'll do when we blow right bomb so check it you back out your six seven you can go six eight if you want to but like i said you'll have a bigger hit to your shooting and i don't want that to happen to you i want you to be able to have fun from three i don't want you to just sit in the mid-range all the time until you get to take over so i'll say go six seven also my boy chase money he has this build and my boy chase be snagging don't get it effed up okay just because it's six seven don't get scared of that a lot of people are going with shorter builds i'm telling you dudes is out here creating six nine paint beasts nobody wants to be seven foot anymore nobody wants to be slow anymore because you need to be able to switch on defense okay now, um, like I said, I choose built for all of my builds, mainly because I don't want to look sickly. I don't want to look like, you know what I'm saying, one of them players that need, need some milk. Now, as far as the attributes go, you have all of these attributes set up. You have one finishing badge, which is all you need. All you need to do is be able to lay up. You can have 20 shooting, 11 playmaking, and 22 defensive badges. Now, the reason why we have 11 playmaking here is because we want you to have gold bailout gold dimer gold quick first step and you can put the rest on unpluckable all right that's 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 the mentality you have to have you have to have the mentality that okay i'll pass out of my shots with accuracy i'll be able to blow by a bigger build with no problem because a quick first step in my speed i'll be able to uh have dimer for my guard you know what i'm saying so when i pass him the ball yes i don't have floor general but i have dimer for him he better hit his shots Okay, that's that's the meta, and of course you want unpluckable. So when you're bringing the ball out, and you know you're, you're holding L2 to get out of the paint after the rebound, you won't be able to get plucked so easily. Okay, and that's what you want for that. Of course, you know physical profile. It goes. You want to be the fastest build out there, and this is the skill breakdown. I chose a defensive and a shooting pie. You want Hall of Fame badges in those categories. Okay, and of course it's a point guard build. Now let me go ahead and put this controller down. The reason why. This is a point guard build instead of a small forward build is because you get more badges. What 2K is not telling you is you can create up to a 6'8 build, but you can do that across the whole spectrum. Okay, if you want to be a if you want to be a big build like a slashing defensive player, you can create them at point guard and just make them 6'8. Just jump the, the height all the way up and you'll get more badges. Now I created this build at small forward and got nowhere near the amount of badges that I have, as well as some of the attributes were much lower. Okay, so you, you, I'm telling you the meta is go with the point guard. If you don't wanna make your build over six, eight, choose point guard. You're going to get more badges, okay? And that's what the game is ran on. The game is ran on badges, the way the badges work together. And I'm telling y'all now, it's gonna work out perfectly because I'm telling you, when you run in twos, you're not gonna be the point guard over a six, four player. That's not going to happen. Now that I've told you guys about builds, let's talk about the badges for a moment. So for my playmakers out there, for anybody that wants to be a shooting playmaking build, the new shooting badge meta is going to be range extender. It's going to be hot zone hunter, dead eye, green machine, volume shooter. And some people do like catch and shoot. And some people like clutch shooter. Now I'm going to be honest with you guys do not and i mean by any means man don't do this to yourselves yo don't 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 do flexible release it don't help you be a better shooter at all the only time the badge pops up is when you effing up your timing so don't f up your timing learn your timing get it down pack okay now yeah so th this is this is it right here man a lot of people use this 
some people do go corner specialist if they're the guard that plays twos and they don't need catch and shoot like that because they just handling the ball what they'll do is this will be their bad setup all right this is how their bad setup will be all right now for um all of my other like regular shooters out there this is this is all you really need right here you know what i'm saying this is where it's at uh boom and then boom this is all you really need like if you just a standardized shooter and all you do is shoot they'll have all these badges on hall of fame just like that all right now to my playmakers out there i know we going through a lot of problems right now because ankle breakers just don't exist in 2k they said they're gonna be putting them inside the patch so as of right now don't get ankle breaker another badge that you do not want to get is space creator these are the badges that you want to focus on quick first step handles for days floor general um unpluckable bailout tight handles and where's the other one? and some people do do dimer as well as a uh, floor general now what i usually run is i usually run this this is like the simplest thing for me to run because i know for a fact that i won't get plucked i'll be able to pass out a shot not with that much accuracy because of course gold bailout is the best but a lot of people run it like this but if you're like one of those people that are very selfish and you really don't care about anybody else on the court this these are the badges that y'all run and stop and go so stop and go if you quick stopping and if you don't know how to quick stop that's a new meta tap l2 lego everything you quick stop all right if you didn't know that you know it now if you want to quick stop me running side to side or whatever tap l2 lego everything shoot that ball you feel me but this is this is the meta for a lot of the guard builds out there that do everything on their own you know what i mean now like i said if you don't got floor general i understand you know you might want to go unpluckable um you might want to not take a terrible shot you might want to go bail out but listen if you a guard man put that floor general on man stop being selfish okay stop being selfish out here in these streets all right now um let me show you guys the badges for defensive players okay so when it comes to defense guards have a totally different aspect than bigs right so as a guard you're gonna want intimidator you're gonna want clamps you're gonna want an interceptor you're gonna want pickpocket and some people run rim protector and chase down artists on bronze and then you might have one for like pick dodger right so this is like what the uh, initial guard badges are right but the new meta for 2k21 is completely different all right let me show you guys what i'm talking about so they won't go rim protector right what they'll do is this is what they'll do they'll come over to hall of fame heart crusher right now heart crusher is the number one defensive badge right now if you didn't know that and you know it now i'm glad that you know it but these badges that that we have set up here is what people go for now of course chase down artists as of right now is not working the best so what people will do they will go rim protector and they'll go pickpocket so if you're playing on the court twos threes or wreck for fives right if you have heart crusher you get the you get the steal and y'all score or you get a block and y'all score the entire team goes cold the entire team not just one player the entire team goes cold i think that's what this badge was intended for last year but a lot of people didn't know about it if you look at it, it says after successfully blocking or stealing the ball from an opponent the additional penalty is given to the opposing players takeover meter but what's happening is heart crusher is affecting the entire team is making the entire team cold so if you're not running heart crusher something is completely wrong with you now as far as my bigs go um these are the badges for bigs right so bigs they won't have clamps what they'll end up having is they'll probably have pogo stick they'll put box on and they will have rebound chaser all the way up and this is usually like the regular setup for bigs they and some people do go brick wall but i'm, I'm gonna be honest with you you don't need brick wall at all okay you really don't but heart crusher is still that badge that you need so if you're a defensive bill and you do not have heart crusher something is wrong with you okay now also pogo stick is one of those badges where it was very effective last year but this year is really not the meta you really don't need pogo stick anymore because all you can all you got to do is just hold your hand straight up paint defense is crazy this year all you got to do is hold your hands up so some i've seen some players go this route you know what I'm saying this is the route that I've seen them go because if they need to switch on defense with the guard, they got clamps. You'll be able to stop the um the guard for a little bit and switch back if need be. But when it comes to rebounding, if you box the big out and it's not a long rebound, 
that box will hold that huge big behind you while the ball falls to the floor. You can either tell somebody else to come and get it, or if nobody's around, you can just run to the ball and get it every time because the other players boxed out. So box out on Hall of Fame is very crucial this year, all right? Now, since we got all the badges and stuff done, let's hop into jump shots. The meta from NBA 2K20 has not really changed that much. There's still one amazing jump shot. Now, of course, there is a total of five that I will talk about, but there's one amazing base that just has not changed. Base 98 is by far the best base in NBA 2K21, all right? If you don't have base 98 on or one of the other four that I'll name, something is wrong with you. By the way, base 38 is dead out here in these streets. Base 38 is not it no more, okay? Now, let me tell you guys about the other bases, right? So since base 98 is dope, jump shot 49 is back. Yeah, base 49 is back in the mother effing building. If you didn't know, now you know, okay? Um, also, where's the other base? Uh, Zach Levine. Zach Levine's base is still good. It, it, it was pretty okay last year, but this year I feel like it got a little bit of a buff, so... Make sure you guys look out for Zach Levine. And, and then notice the, the, the kneecap to, to feet. If, if you see a person shooting like that, you know that that's Zach Levine, okay? Um, another one. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Let's go back. My man, Tony F.M. Parker. This base has literally tested the time. I don't know why, but Tony Parker base is just still good. A lot of people are liking Tony Parker's base, and mainly because... A couple people have been watching uh 2K Lab or watching Annoying, and Tony Parker is making his rounds, man. So you guys definitely might want to check out for that joint. Um, where is the last base? Uh, let's see. Dwayne Wade. Dwayne Wade's base is is pretty wonky. A lot of people don't like the look of it, but it's pretty effective. Okay, pretty effective. Now I will give out an honorable mention. Okay, um, let me see. this one all right so here's the honorable mention this is this is one that you might want to try out okay jump shot 113 now what i would ask for you to do is i would ask for you to try out this jump shot just by itself no custom try it out by yourself see how you like it now of course i do have rudy gay uppers on the reason why i have those on those are placeholders whatever uppers you like and you feel like you see a cue from them, mainly Curry, Parker, Michael Jordan. If you see a cue within those uppers that you really like, choose that. The base is just a general base timing of how many greens and the milliseconds it'll take you to get to that green window, how much time you have to hit that shot. That's what the bases are for. The uppers is mainly for visual cue, okay? Because most people don't shoot with meters if you're really good at the game. If you shoot with a meter, you're meter made. Nobody has a problem with that. I'm meter made at the moment, mainly because my jump shot isn't as consistent as others' jump shots. Okay, let's talk about dribbles for a moment. Now, I watch people like Steezo, right? And I can tell you guys right now. And of course, you see my my jump shot is 98 MJ. But um, I watch Steezo, and Steezo has given us some dribbles that may be something we might want to take a look at he hasn't really reve revealed like what to do with the dribbles as far as combos yet i know he's probably cooking it up but these are going to be dribble styles and everything that i'll show you that you should check into so as far as dribble styles go you want to try out quick and kyrie irving okay as far as moving crossovers pro 2 is still a great moving crossover i was using it for the first four days of the game you know what i'm saying so uh, mostly all of my videos that are out previously before this is Pro 2 gameplay and Pro 5, of course. Uh, moving behind the backs, Pro 5. Me and Steezo was in the same same wheelhouse with that moving behind the back. Um, I like it. He likes it. Moving spin, same thing. All you need is Pro 4. All right, Pro 4 is just fire. Moving hesitations. Now, of course, Pro 3. Everybody remembers Pro 3 from last year. But there's something about Pro 8 that is fire it creates space it's the way that steezo dribbles he he likes that combo and i'm gonna try it out of course and i've been doing pretty good with it at the park i streamed on facebook the other day and i was cooking with this joint so that's pretty dope six eyes up a lot of people say that these really don't matter but steph curry for me was pretty dope um steezo likes john Morant, and i'll probably see what it's about because i believe you can speed boost out of it too so that's that's something crazy i gotta I gotta practice up of course 
park size up park size ups to me is dope and park size up seven is fire now the reason for this is because when i'm doing a park size up moving um I, I roll on the ground like the professor and stuff like that it's pretty dope basic size up package pro two mainly because of that behind the back you know what i'm saying that behind the back is everything um size up escape package let me tell you something everybody remembers pro four from last year but if you watched any shooting tutorial video on youtube you see pro five mainly because you can stand anywhere on the court you can play on pro and you can do this one size up escape and shoot every single time uncontested because when this size up happens it creates so much distance between you and the defender that that little white bar that's under the player disappears and you just shoot the ball and you're going to most likely be shooting or moving so if you don't know your time and i'm sorry you got to learn it but most people shoot with their meters off with this move okay um, and normal uh, five was the triple threat style that I use mainly because, you know, it gets you low to the ground and Stizo uses this uh, size up mainly because I'm guessing you keep the ball up tight. And when you probably want to do like them jab and spin outs and stuff like that, it looked a little bit better. But I like to get real low to the ground and get my shaker to fit, um, moving my my analog like this so that my player doing that little like keep doing that move. So that's that's what I usually rock with. Um, what else is there? Um, I think that's about it. As far as layups go, everybody knows long athlete is still in the game and still rock out crazy. Um, I use straight um, arm tomahawks and quick drops off of one. And then I use some base baseline joints. Now I put all these other dunks on just as a test phase yesterday. And I can say now I don't rim graze at all. I don't do no rim grazes. I don't do no basic one handers. None of these equip after I have the straight arm tomahawks and the quick drops off one. Every time I'm doing a two hand dunk, I do that. Every time I'm doing a one hand dunk, I do a straight arm tomahawk. So eventually I'm probably going to take those off. Right now, uh, anything else from the meta that I need to let you guys know about? Uh, I think that's about it is as far as getting playmaking badges, pick and roll is the easiest way. Um, if you are a slasher looking to get um, a screen, all you got to do is flood one side with three players, tap L1 or hold L1 so you can get a screen for the back door cut easy alley-oops every time like i said if you want a shooting method um the shooting method from last year where you bring the guard up to set your screen and you're at limitless that really doesn't work as much but you just have to look at the, the white bar under the player if it disappears you can just shoot the ball every time but the new meta is that pro five do that backup moving shot from limitless every time if you want you can get a screen and run like hell and do a moving three-pointer if you want to if you want to get shooting badges defensive badges are the easiest Go get rebounds, get steals, get blocks. That's really just about all you can do and, and, and contest a lot. So if you're running a zone, run a 2-3. You know what I'm saying? Don't run don't run a 3-2, uh, a mainly because in the 3-2, you won't have enough paint presence to possibly get the rebound. But what you can do is if you're inside the paint and you're a guard, box somebody out. Box outs count towards your defense. So box people out. Eventually, you'll get a lot of defensive badges. By the way, um, just to let y'all understand something, the reason why I say that is because all of my badges are maxed out. All right, that's why I say when it comes to badges, I know how to get these badges. It's not that hard. You know what I'm saying? And for my shooting badges, I did the method where I did the profile, backed up, and shot the midi. You know what I'm saying? You can shoot from anywhere. You don't have to shoot from three every time. If you know that you you comfortable in the midi, shoot the midi, all right? But I think I've, I've kept you here. Oh, by the way, R1L1, all right? So... Listen, R1L1, right? Um, let me see if anybody does it here. I'm just going to come to the randoms court. I'm just going to watch real quick. All right. So basically the way R1L1 is, is when you grab the rebound, you just press L1, R1. You know what I'm saying? Like you just bring up the icons and you throw it to the closest person to the rim. So R1L1 every time. You know what I'm saying? Easy buckets because you just getting out on a fast break easily. So let me see if uh, these people, if these people uh, miss the shot and then maybe I'll see it. Okay, he just shot up a three, boom. And then look at that, um, at the six to 17, you guys might want to back it up. Look, he did it there on the randoms too. It's just, it's R1L1 every time, you know what I'm saying? You bring up the icons and you just boom, easily pass it down court. You know what I'm saying? So when we be like, oh, R1, like just pass it down court. You know what I'm saying? Like just, just throw it down, that's all you gotta do. You know what I'm saying? But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, make sure you guys hit that like button, man. 
appreciate all the subscribers we are on our way to 650,000, man so appreciate all the love and i will see you guys in the next video man make sure you guys check out my facebook streams and make sure you turn on notice here for new videos peace